welcome everybody to to this uh, this episode of the show. My name is Jordan. Today I am joined by the lovely Trav Collins. Trav, how are you? How are you? Not bad. If you don't know Trav, he is a prominent busker throughout Adelaide, uh, singer, songwriter, master of a, a few different instruments, uh, including one we just chatted about just before the camera started. Can you uh, explain that one a little bit? Yeah, so um, I haven't written a, a proper original track for it yet. I've got a few ideas for it, but it's a um, it's a skateboard yeah. lap steel that I made, and it's um, yeah, it was I started in grade ten and then I didn't finish it until like after school. And I thought, oh, I can, maybe this might be cool busking. And then it was the bridge was made of a, a piece of firewood that I sanded and made it look alright. And then I drilled the holes, and the drill bit ended up being. The, uh, the saddle, and then yeah. it all—it was all shonky, and it, it's, it holds tune for about a song, but it's. Well, that's right. Yeah, it's uh, the, I'll, I'll take the—I'll take the photo and throw it up on screen so everyone yeah, can see it. Yeah, it's an interesting, interesting uh, sound. For yeah. A skateboard. Um, kind of, kind of shows you have a bit of engineering behind you besides uh, the music. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, like um, with all my gear, if you see me in the mall, yeah. like the trolley and stuff, that's all homemade. My mate in his shed, and um, yeah, it's kind of. Yeah, I think I was having. Gotta improvise a little bit. Yeah, I think I think I was having a drink at. Uh, might have been. I think it was. I think it was the cranker or or on the other side. And just the you skating. Oh, yeah. Skating yeah. Oh, there. really? Yeah, pushing it along. Yeah. yeah. It was the best. Uh, yeah. How long have you considered yourself a musician for? Uh, two years. Two years. Okay. Yeah. And have you been busking for the same amount of time? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty mm. much. Like I've been like a sole trader as a business for like a year. Okay. And nice. I was at uni um, in twenty seventeen doing the popular music at the con. Oh, nice. And which, is, which is good, like, it was good, but I found I was kind of running on the spot a little bit, and okay. I was, yeah. I wanted to, I just wanted to travel and move around a bit more in Australia, so I okay, deferred, sense, yeah. and this year I've been getting around in the van. So. Yeah, you up in, up in Broome. Just, <coughs> yeah, just up in Broome, month. yeah, yeah, my dad lives in Broome, so oh, nice. that's, um, that was my main reason to go up there, and then I organised a few gigs, because like, yep. I was looking after his house for a bit. And, so. Oh, some bonus. Yeah, no, it was lovely up there. It was, it was um, a bit warmer than the winter we were having. Oh, yeah, yeah. In uh, September, yeah. Uh, for, for those who don't know, it's currently about 33, 34 degrees right now. Uh, so if you see us sweating... Put and it's raining. Yeah. But it's raining, it's weird. Got all that away. Now, you, you've busted a few um, uh, really unique places, not, not just in Adelaide, but around Australia. Do you have a story of kind of like what your best one would be? Well, oh, my best, one, my my, my favourite set was um, down at Manly, Manly Corso, oh, okay, yeah. and um, which is in Sydney. Yeah, yeah. And it's um, it was it was the last set of the day. It was about four thirty, and I was like, I'll sneak one more in, yeah. and then I it wasn't looking great. And then I, there was a photo online of like I was like quickly told someone like quick, someone get a photo because I want someone to see the crowd that I had. But and then it ended up there with like a backpackers. Oh yeah, just nice. um. So I was sitting, and then there were seats and people standing, and then there's a backpackers right there, and it all lined people up on the roof as well. So it was like, no, that was good. It was, I don't know, it was about 120 people or something. But you're used to you're used to actually drawing big big crowds. I mean, yeah, every, every yeah. time you go in Rundle, uh, it, it yeah, just yeah, kind of explodes like. Yeah, if you get, I think about 100 people is a pretty good, yeah, is a solid effort for like a. You can get people to kind of stop what they're doing. Yeah, and just stand there and watch. Yeah, I mean crowds well. also attract, attract crowds. Yeah, so that's like the biggest thing. And so people start they're looking at something and then they'll come as well. And yeah, so it just gets yeah it snowballs a bit. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah. you got a live album coming out soon, actually. Yeah. Can you tell us a little about a little bit about the recording process behind it? Yeah, so I I did a studio album at Wizard Tone Studios in um, in December last year, and then it came out in March. And then I decided, oh, I'd like to get another take yeah. of of the recordings. So, because they were like, they're nearly almost a year on, about eight months on from when I did the studio album. So they they changed quite a lot um, from performing them all year. So I re um, organised a a live slot on the seventeenth of August at Wizard Tone, and then I was it was a ticketed show. So it was a normal show, but it was inside the same room as the, as the okay, studio. Yeah. So. Wizard Tone's quite a big room, like, you, they used to record orchestras and things in there back in the day. So it's quite a big, a big space. But there, so we had 60 people and they, um, they paid for the album, with the it's tickets, nice. and then, which is nice. And then, um, yeah, just ran it like a normal show and it was all, but it was all studio recorders, so we had microphones hanging everywhere and 
was all I had headphones as oh, well, yeah, like yeah. for the thing. But yeah, so that's coming out. It's getting mixed tomorrow actually. The final oh, mixes right. are tomorrow and then it should be getting mastered. Hopefully within the next week and then it should be hopefully out by the end of the year. Yes, but okay. yeah, nice, fingers crossed. Nice yeah. Christmas present for everyone? Yeah, no joke. No, it should be I'm pretty keen. Uh, so going is there is there a big kind of change for you personally going from busking to doing more kind of traditional shows? No, it's the same. I I prefer I my busking show is like as if I would was on a stage. Yeah, so okay. I treat busking just like a stage. I like can I mean you can be a little bit more loose with how it's run because there's obviously people just walking yeah, past yeah. but it's more there's more of a a tough moment of getting the crowd when you're yeah. busking other than standing in front of and you've already got it, so it's slightly the yeah. build is a little bit different but um yeah. It's yeah. coming. You'd be uh, you'd be competing with the, the guy who plays the, the pipes or something always Oh pipe guy, yeah. Yeah, pipe guy, yeah, so. yeah. yeah I'm good friends with pipe guy, he's good. Uh, yeah. I like how he's just known as pipe guy. Yeah. Uh, Jake. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, now you're uh, speaking of the the skater idea. Yeah. You you play actually you actually play didgeridoo as well. Yeah, I play the did. That's like predominantly my mic stand. Yeah. <laughs> but then um, I've got a few songs with it. Yeah. Okay. How'd you how'd you, how'd you get into something like that? I That's... started my music on the trombone. Okay. Yeah. Which is like the lip buzzing. Yep. Kind of thing, and then I stopped playing. I played that for about eight years in a big band at school and stuff. And okay. Nice. Was, yeah, so that was that was good, but then I went more guitar, more strings, yeah, more singing, yeah. and then I thought, oh, the didgeridoo's not far out of that pitch range, because I was on the bass trombone as well, so it kind of, yeah, it kind of fit in, I had a go, and then I learned it in about a week, like, it didn't take long because it was already there, and then had a cup of water with a straw, and you just got to oh, nice. <laughs> try and keep the bubbles going, the circular breathe, but um, yeah, it wasn't, I thought it added a bit more worldly. Yeah. Something I don't know. That's right. Uh, how do you how do you manage busking when we have when we have heat like this here in Adelaide? Um, you either don't go <laughs> and you just <laughs> sit in the aircon, or um, or sometimes I have an umbrella. But um, I find in the mall, so there's like shady spots. Yeah. Which is good, and, yeah. But then the best spot at the moment is like you have to sit in the sun for the crowd to be in the shade. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you always you got to put the crowd first, or else it's, oh, yeah. it won't yeah. it won't work. It like won't be worth it. So. Yeah, if you're in the sun there in the shade, you just got to tough it out for like 40 minutes or whatever it is. And yeah. <laughs> uh, any any kind of uh, interesting stories throughout Boston? Like, have you had any uh, good or bad experiences? Um, yeah. Um, I've got a, I've got a lot of gigs from busking, and a lot of like recently I just did um, probably my biggest kind of biggest. I don't know, it's kind of the biggest thing I've done, sort of. It was, a, I did an advert for the South Australian Tourism Commission. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I was playing on the beach. So, I, okay, so the story goes, I got, I was going to, that was when I just left to go to WA. Okay. Drove three days, got to Fremantle, and I got a phone call on Friday that said, they were like, hey, like, um, we seen you in the mall last week, and we'd like to Ooh. get you on Jeez. next Monday to come and perform um, on the beach at Ethel Rec, which is at Marion Bay, which is where I grew up, evidently. So oh, wow, it was like a real, uh, it was a real trip out. It's like I'm trying to, I'm just driven three days, like yeah. three, nearly three thousand k's, and I was like, oh, I, I probably can't do it. So, and then they're like, oh, well, we'll pay, we'll pay for the flights, we'll pay for everything, we'll pay for your time. And I was like, oh, cool. Okay, so it's, <laughs> it was a bit more legit. So I was like, okay, like, so they booked the flight for Sunday. I left the van at the airport and came back and did a day of filming. And then, yeah. And then yes, yeah, so I drove that down to Marion Bay. And and then I got flown back to Perth and went back on my way and that was that tripped me out. I was like didn't didn't know where I was and didn't feel like it happened. And then I um and then about a week later I got up to Broome and then I got another phone call that's like, Hey, we'd like to record a new version of one of your songs, Scream at oh. the Skies, which was the song and I was like the least that was the song that I really this goes for eight and eight and a half minutes on the album, so I thought like no one wants that for a yeah. radio or an advert, but they picked that one, and um, I had to go back and re-record it. So for about uh, two days in the studio. So then, so I flew back again, left the vending room, and came back. And my girlfriend actually just got to Broome, and we were meant to hang out for like ten days, and then we all crossed over. And so, yeah, so it was like it was it was. It was good looking back on it, but at the yeah. time it was like, oh, this is pretty stressful. Bit, yeah. a bit hectic. Yeah. yeah, and then I eventually sold a, um, a song license and got that oh, nice. all going. So that was yeah, pretty good, like, money-wise. Yeah. But yeah, it was. It has to be like yeah, really unique to be able to 
picked up and do something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just it was pretty. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. I'm I'm in the advert for like because they did like this massive long feature film. Okay. For sure. it, which goes for, it actually goes for five days, like the actual film. Yeah, it was oh. re- it's really weird. Yeah. That's uh, but, um, experimental. So I'm like the last six minutes, so I just tell everyone to skip it all and go to the last. Week. But, oh, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, but um, yeah, it was interesting. It was an interesting thing. Yeah, so negotiating probably, like on your terms for licenses that was like a big thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What's it? Yeah, what's it like to kind of step into that area? Yeah, so I basically just rang out for a straight away and was like, oh, I think <laughs> I've got a dodgy offer. Like, I don't think it's enough. And then they said, yeah, that's not enough. And then they gave me. Then I got up onto a guy from Amcos in Sydney, and he helped me out and negotiated the fee. And okay. Yeah. yeah. So it was a it was a big learning curve, but I know I know about it now. So yeah. 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 It's definitely yeah, because there are a few. Shady things. I mean, yeah, in, in I mean, and that, and they actually ended up ripping off a lot of people anyway. Like, and I didn't realise they were doing like hundred fifty dollar licenses to be in the film, and okay. it was all a bit. Yeah. So which was is, was this the the direct South Australian tourers on board that was doing this? Yeah, I think so. They're kind of. It's, it happens a lot in advertising. Dodgy like, bastards. Yeah, they leave they leave music to the last, and then they're like, oh, like we don't have enough budget, and then there is budget. There's yeah. always budget. Like when it's like a massive thing like the tourism oh, yeah. commission there's going to be budget but there's enough budget for the executives to go out and have a lovely wine and dine but yeah yeah like, yeah so pay your musicians pay licenses yeah. Like, yeah so that was, was that was yeah. that kind of your first experience yeah that was that? like a, a pretty one of my most professional experiences i yeah. guess yeah and that was this and that was from someone walking past and doing a 10 second video of me busking yeah. and saying oh you should be in the advert so yeah i think the producers were going past and they thought it was cool but yeah, yeah, that's right. So, yeah, like, and I've done a lot of other gigs as well. Awesome. Obviously, busking. So busking's definitely been a huge, huge thing for yeah, you. Yeah, it's almost like a an audition to yeah, definitely the world yeah. a little bit. That's how I see it. Because there's like if there's only three people watching, one of those three people could be you know, can't record if they're yeah, exactly. It's that, it's like a gig I did. I did a gig at the Duke of York. Nice. And the hum. It was on a Wednesday afternoon at four o'clock, so okay, not, not was, the best time. Yeah, it was. It was. I just said, yeah, okay, I'll I'll come along, and um, it was. I was playing to one person. It was only, and it was my girlfriend. It's one person, That's and fine. and so, and it turns out that the the sound the sound guy's wife was on the board of. Blenheim, Blenheim Festival. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, Dude. so that's and then I ended up getting getting a slot at the at Blenheim in the, in the Clare Valley just from that doing that show to one person. So it's kind of you got to think it's all it's all a bit of a stepping stone. Yeah, we'll could be the crappiest gig, and then it's like, well, I, at least that one person yeah. saw me play, and then I got a, a festival slot. Yeah, because so. it's like in in Adelaide, it's definitely. I was supposed to tell you three minutes ago that we hit the halfway mark, but you guys were too busy, so letting you know we've got seven minutes until it's hit 20 minutes. Okay, cool. Okay, okay now continue, sorry. <laughs> uh, so, just for, for people who are kind of still at that kind of uh, beginning moment and they're wanting to actually get into busking, yeah, yeah. tips and advice? Mainly, I think gear is a big thing. Yeah. So, um, work out what you want to play and work out what instruments you want to bring and then work out how you're going to like amplify it, like yeah. what speaker you're going to use and then work out how you're going to power it because you're not supplied any power, it's all battery, like you have to yeah. bring your own inverters and batteries and things and then work out how you're going to carry it. So, yeah, And cool. then once, you, once you're comfortable with like how your setup is and just make your, make sure your performance, your performance comes yeah. first, like if you're unprepared, because yeah. I treat it exactly like I would a show, like it's yeah. not like I'm coming out and just doing experimental which works for some people but um yeah if you're doing if you're looking really solid and it all and it's all about the visual as well like my trolley's all spray painted and all yeah, colourful yeah. it's it's kind of a big it's all got to draw in like the visually like loud is it sounding good is it yeah it's more more than yeah. just kind of the song more than just it, the like music a, it's like yeah. how you're presenting because you could some of the most amazing musicians are just on a classical guitar sitting yeah, in a corner in an alley and no one can hear it and it's because it's not amplified and it's not, the presence isn't there, yeah. then it, it comes off to people walking by as, oh, that's not a good like when yeah. it's like they're playing some crazy, yeah. <laughs> something around, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, what about um, permits and everything? How, oh, how permits are easy, in Adelaide, permits are really easy. It's like, go into the council 
office, you just go to the front desk and say, I'm on a busking permit, and okay. you get it for a month, it's free in Adelaide, which is really nice. Oh, wow, okay. And um, you just say... Now, are there certain places you're allowed to and not allowed to? Yeah, it's, um, Runner Mall is the main, okay. the main spot. You can busk within, I think it's within the four terraces, don't quote me, but... <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and um, you got to be 50 metres from another busker, and okay, it's, only, it's only half an hour, but it's a bit more lenient, like... Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've I've seen one time when I saw you play in Rundle Security, I came by, I told you to turn. Uh, turn yeah, it yeah. You, oh, you got to I'm pretty much friends with the security guards. Okay. In, well, so it, that, it wasn't so even that loud. Yeah, so it's not only the shops complain, and then they're like, oh, yeah, oh yeah. and then it's funny because the security guard comes over and he's like, oh, I just gotta look like I'm telling you off because yeah. it's all good, man. Like he's gotta, yeah. So yeah, okay. no, it's not too bad. I mean, if you're being a serious nuisance, uh, you can. I think you can get your permit revoked or something, but you yeah, should, no, right. yeah. should be right. Should be right. Yeah. Yeah. Don't annoy anyone yeah. or anything. Yeah, and uh, with the crowds as well, they don't like you blocking the way. But that's yeah. if you're getting a crowd like that, it's yeah, pretty. You can't control you're going well. Yeah. So it, yeah. So you, can, you can't. You can't uh, sit there singing and then add in. Can everyone just move over a little bit? Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I had to do that. I did that in the fringe when I was playing on the uh, okay, yeah. on the uh, random street closures because um, they're like. The people running it and coming around and saying, like, oh, look, like, people, you yeah. don't need it. Yeah. They're like, they almost got me to put a rope out and say, come up to the rope, but that's oh, more wow. like a circus act kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, but no, it was okay. I just said, take a step in. I don't mind. Yeah, I mean, it's Adelaide. <laughs> I mean, I know it's yeah. Adelaide, but not everyone is a, is a weirdo. Yeah. Isn't that crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, last, uh, towards the end of this year, you played a few festivals, as you as mentioned before. Yeah. Um, Kind of uh, adding on to the the whole busking transformation thing. What's it What's it like to be going from sitting on the streets, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, suitcase in front of you, trying to get yeah, some yeah. change, yeah. going to on a on a stage at a festival and um, doing that? I just I just I treat it the same. I just yeah, try and treat it the yeah. same. It's just like you gotta like you just gotta you gotta be confident. You gotta tell your stories. I like having. The, Putting in the talking in between and chatting about, like, yeah, and you got to, you just yeah. got to, got to have good banter. Yeah, you got to have a bit of banter. Yeah, and like, um, yeah, it's the same. You just treat it, treat it more like, whether it's one person, five hundred people, three thousand people, or whatever. It's kind of put your best, yeah. put your best sound out, play, give it everything, drop all your emotion in the. Yeah, exactly. It's because it's all to me. It's like a big emotional dump of yeah, conjuring yeah, up yeah. like the feeling to make the song work because. We're having an off day and then the song isn't emotionally working yeah. and then it kind of, you just, you can't feel it. I'm all about, I think there's a, the feeling of the song is much more yeah, than how yeah. it's been you gotta have technically played. Yeah, you're like, you've got to be technically solid but then you got to have proper passion and people have to feel yeah. what you're saying is real. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so. Uh, now you've, uh, you've been in Adelaide all, all your life, have you? I grew up in Marion Bay. Marion Bay, okay. Which is like, on the York Peninsula, on the right yeah, on the yeah, toe, yeah, yeah, and okay. um, That's yeah. Right. So I grew up there for all my um, all my primary school. So we lived there for about nine years, and, then, right, yeah. and then moved to Adelaide to come to high school, and went to Brighton Secondary for the music uh, music program. Yeah. Okay. Well, so what do you, What do you think of Adelaide's kind of uh, music scene? Yeah, it's good. You just got to know where to look. I mean, yeah. a lot of people rag on it and say like, "Oh, it's dying, it's dying." But then you just, you just got to know where to look. You got to walk out your front door and go and have a look because there's stuff going on like there you could go to a gig every night if you were yeah, yeah. properly. yeah so um, yeah I think it's I think it's friendly as well Compa- nice, like yeah. Sydney and Melbourne it's quite competitive yeah well here it's still it's still like it's nice and tight knit do you think yeah it's a, like yeah because if you do a gig here and they're like oh I know the person who manages this and then you just it snowballs really quick in Adelaide yeah, yeah so that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, so out of the, out of the kind of local scene, do you have do you have favourites when it comes to bands or artists? Um, I've been I whenever I have a um, whenever I have have to pull out of a slot or something, or I've double booked or something like that, I always um, go to a mate, Jimmy Bay, Jimmy okay. Bay Music. He like stomps on a on a suitcase and has okay. a tambourine. <laughs> he plays he plays like kind of uh, blues. Oh, nice. Old okay. school kind of stuff. Yeah, so he's my go-to like fill-in man. Oh, okay. But yeah. um, yeah, there's like a roots. That's okay, that's nice. Yeah. Country. I don't know. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah. In, in terms in terms of your your music specifically, <laughs> um, what kind of influences your your songs and songwriting? Um, all 
all my songs are from real stories. Okay. Yeah, so I, I write heavily from realistic things that I've yep. lived or like my family. You know, there's a lot of family stuff in there because it's like when I just recently left home and it was all kind of yeah, all coming yeah. to a big explosion at the end. Yeah, there's a bit of a emotional thing going on, so like yeah, just, yeah. I just chuck it all into songs. And then, um, yeah, uh, my my influences in terms of like artists that I listen, obviously like anyone could pick John Butler yeah. as a pretty big one. And then yeah, I do see it for that. Yeah, there's a, yeah, like, like just the yeah. just the guitar yeah. kind of. I went when I was twelve years old. I went to a, um, his live show. Cool in at the gov so it was solo wow okay. yeah so it was only like three meters away and i was just watching intently like i just picked up playing guitar yeah. and i was just like oh that, i think that's what i want to one of those life-changing experiences yeah one of those like i think it's set the other path. it's an open tuning like i just i just you discover open tuning and it's like oh my god there's a <laughs> like, yeah it's just another i think there's about five tunings on the album all different so if it, that's where my banter has to come in because i'm Constantly tuning on stage, okay, and then yeah. Um, yeah. you gotta talk, you gotta fill in the gaps. But um, yeah, and then I saw um, Xavier Rudd play, and I was like, oh my god, like yeah, yeah, guitar is a thing. It all you just pick it up everywhere, and yeah. then and then I was like, oh, I'm, I'm sounding too much like it. I need to step away, yeah. and then I need to bring my own, yeah, bring your own sound. So yeah, I'm yeah. slowly becoming my own, my own tone and my. Own yeah, awesome. Yeah, okay. style, I guess. Brilliant, okay. Um, we're going to we're going to wrap up wrap up now. Uh, this episode won't come out till around New Year's, so for next year, do you have any any big plans? What what can what can Australia expect? What can Australia next? expect? Um, I'm gonna I'm going to enter in the uh, Blues Fest busking okay, competition yes. over in Byron, so I'm gonna head over there for I think it's around April. Okay. So I'm gonna be hanging around Byron Bay and stuff during April, and. Um, yeah, the live album should be out. Hopefully, it might be out after New Year's, might be out before. We'll see how we go on that one. Yeah. And um, yeah, hopefully a second album. I'm really keen. I've okay. been writing. There's stuff on the back burner. It's all happening. It's so just waiting to get the time. Yeah, it's waiting. Sure. Yeah, waiting to yeah. get the time. I've been living in the van for like almost 11 months. Yeah. So that there's no there's only one bedroom and it's yeah. as big as a bed. <laughs> so yeah, there's no space to That's no space to write. So um, it's going to be a big writing year, I think. Yeah. yeah. In terms of keeping a, a music career going, what's the? I mean, what's it like doing that out of the van? Yeah, it's good. It's good in terms of shows and traveling. Like, it's so cheap. It's so cheap to travel. Like, I, the first time I went over to, in April to Sydney, I was there for a month, and it cost me seventy bucks for a bed and a shower for a whole oh, month. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, for a whole month. So, I just joined a twenty-four hour gym and oh, God, kind that's of just that's your shower. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's that's like smart. ten wow. bucks a week for a shower yeah. every day. So. Yeah, it's kind of, it's really handy. It's really handy for carrying gear, obviously, because they're big. And yeah. Then, yeah. Um, but yeah, writing, writing is where it lacked for me. There's no, you're always in public. So yeah, yeah. Like, the only time I was playing was at a gig or busking. So yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah there's that that private time isn't there. But traveling is super good. So. Okay. so there's a bonus. You win some, you lose some. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. Um, Trav, thank you thank very you, much. Yeah. Thank you for being on the show. Yeah. Um, We'll chuck links, everything in the description. Um, if Trav's new album is out by the time this comes out, that will be in the description. Uh, if not, you can go to Facebook, and it is Trav Collins Music. It's on Facebook, Instagram as well. Instagram is Trav Collins Music as well, and um, and it's on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play. It's on all the all the platforms as well. So yeah. And then, uh, h- how often do you bust? Uh, How often do we catch it? If it's good weather, I'll busk like three or four times a week. Okay. Mostly the weekends, so like from around Thursday to Sunday, I'll be okay, playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but um, depends. Depends if it's too hot, too cold, oh, yeah, raining. Or if it's raining. Yeah. yeah, or if I'm even here, or yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, if yeah, if you want to see live music for free, I mean, jump into Rundle. You can see Trout. Yeah. I've always sure. got CDs on hand, so. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Brilliant, man. Thank, thank you, you so yeah, much. Thanks, man. No worries. Pleasure. Yeah. Can't wait to see what you have uh, in store for the future. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be great. <laughs> Description, links, everything. Trav Collins. Guys, thank you so much. We will see you in the next episode. <laughs> thank you.